What's up everyone, it's Arcaknaut here, and today we are stepping into the enigmatic, shadowy world of Undernight in Bird. If you're interested in the world of Undernight in Bird, but can't be bothered to play its arcade and the chronicle mode, this video will prepare you for the upcoming sequel, and might also help you to choose a main as well. From the background story of Undernight to each and every 20 playable characters, I will be talking about their origin, their overall playstyle and what to expect from the sequel. We'll dive into the heart of this series, so basically you will be ready for Undernight in Bird 2, Sid Celes. And remember, if you are passionate about JRPGs, retro or fighting games, don't forget to join my Discord channel and follow me on Twitter. First of all, the world of Undernight in Bird unfolds in a modern setting that is tinged with supernatural elements. The core of the story revolves around a phenomenon known as Hollow Knight. Occurring once a month, this mysterious event envelops the night in darkness and ordinary humans are oblivious to its occurrence. During this time, the boundaries between the human world and a parallel dimension become blurred, giving rise to various supernatural events. Within the Hollow Knight, creatures known as Voids emerge. These Voids were once humans who lost their humanity after being consumed by their own existential energy known as Excess. As a result, they transform into these monstrous entities that hunger for excess of others, particularly targeting humans with high existential potential. The interaction between humans and Voids during the Hollow Knight gives rise to inverts. Individuals who have survived encounters with Voids. These survivors absorb some of the powers of the Voids, which awakens their own excess, granting them extraordinary abilities. The process of becoming an inbird is perilous, and not all who encounter Voids actually survive. But some of them change forever, both in terms of abilities and their perception of the world. The narrative explores interactions, conflicts and alliances formed among these inverts, voids and other factions. Before talking about the factions and the characters of Undernight in Bird, let me take you to the origin story of these voids, inverts and excess. Starting with the Hollow God. The Hollow God in the universe of Undernight in Bird is an enigmatic and pivotal entity and linked to the Hollow Knight and the Hollow God is believed to be source of the power known as Excess. The tale of this mysterious young traveler starts as he arrives in a small village. He receives food and shelter from the villagers, and in a show of gratitude for kindness and care he receives, this traveler decides to repay them in a unique way. The Hollow God unveils a strange form of magic previously unknown to the villagers and begins to teach them how to use it the magic that will be known as Excess. Adding to his enigmatic nature, this traveler vanishes a few days after imparting this knowledge without any explanation or farewell. As his sudden disappearance leaves the villagers with new powers and likely with many unanswered questions. Although the villagers try to hide the magic to prevent any aggressions towards them, it was inevitable. This village, later known as Nightblade, found themselves in a war against an organization called Lith Kreis, with a mission to maintain order during the Hollow Knights. Both the Nightblade and the Lith Kreis will play a vital role in Undernight in Bird's story as well, so let's talk about them before moving on. Lith Kreis seeks to control and regulate the powers that in Bird's gain, stemming from their belief that these powers, if left unchecked, could lead to chaos and destruction. Lead Christ operates with a strict code and a hierarchical structure, often coming into conflict with those who do not align with their vision of order. They are basically like crusaders or holy order church in terms of design and narrative. In contrast, Nightblade represents a group with a more flexible and accepting approach to the powers of the Hollow Knight. They do not seek to control or to regulate these powers to the same extent as Licht Christ. Instead, they focus on understanding and coexisting with the changes brought by the Hollow Knights. 
This group tends to operate more covertly, often clashing with Litkreis over their differing ideologies, and Litkreis war didn't just erupt suddenly. Litkreis actually wanted to have Nightblade under control and prevent the use of excess. And the escalation of the war was marked by several key battles that took place during the successive Hollow Knights. These encounters, of course, often resulted in significant casualties. However, to prevent any further harm, both sides decided to send their best warriors for a duel to mark the war's end. The leader of Lit Crisis operation, Wildstein, was very accepting of this decision and volunteered himself. And on the other side, the young warrior Kuon was chosen to represent the village. Kuon is quite important here as he is the antagonist of Undernight in Bird 2, Sis Celes. Kuon emerged victorious due to the immense excess bestowed upon him. Despite his defeat, Wildstein attempted to destroy the excess vessel within Kuon, but inadvertently caused excess to transfer into his own vessel. This led to Wildstein transforming into a void-like beast or a creature, and in order to prevent any further harm, Suddenly, an angelic being called Batista intervened, giving Kuon a wing that nullified the excess flow. And with a quick strike, Kuon saved Wildstein but leaving him partially transformed. Batista's blade-like wing is also another important aspect here, as it will be later revealed with the protagonist, Hyde. Distraught by his transformation and feeling unable to return to Lit Christ, Wildstein defected and ordered his troops to withdraw from Japan, subsequently joining Nightblade. In response to Wildstein's defection and the circumstances surrounding it, Edelheit, a leader in Lit Christ, radically restructured the organization, mandated that Lit Christ become an all female group driven by her belief that men could not be trusted. After the Lit Christ War, the Nightblade faction split into two groups the reformists and the moderates, with Kuon assuming the leadership of the moderates. This division led to a significant conflict between two factions, resulting in numerous casualties, and in an effort to control and safeguard the knowledge of excess, the village elder decided to divide this knowledge between Kuon and his younger sister, Lin. Kuon essentially became a living curse, doomed to eternal life, while Lin received the power of reincarnation, a power to transfer her consciousness from a body to another. Burdened by his new state and responsibility, Kuon left Lin under Wildstein's care and subsequently departed, with Wildstein and Lin soon following. In the time that followed, Kuon mysteriously disappeared and began pursuing an unknown objective manipulating Hilda in her quest to become a rebirth during the events of the first game. And until the recent events in Kanzakai, where the game's current story takes place, Lit Kreis was forbidden to operate in Japan. Although it remains an all-female organization, a sister group known as Rittershield was formed as an all-male counterpart. Due to Edelheid's persistent distrust of men, tension exists between these two organizations, and during the Hollow Knight of the first Undernight in Birth, Hilda, with her organization Amnesia, seeking to make herself a stronger Inbird type called Rebirth. Lit Christ trying to stop Hilda from achieving this power, Nightblade trying to find Lin and Wildstein. Meanwhile, the other characters clash against each other, maybe for their ideals, their goals, or sometimes just for fun. And I guess this is the background and the origin story of Under Night in Birth, but as a side note, there are six rebirths existing, and two of them are Kuon and the leader of the Lit Christ, Edel Height. While Hilda, the antagonist of the first game, tries to become one. Starting from here, I will be talking about each and every character based on their chronicle order, starting with Lit Christ's fifth executioner, Orie. Orie is the fifth member of the Lit Christ, and her journey begins with a personal vendetta against the Voids. Driven by a traumatic childhood incident where a Void killed her parents, her story is about her struggles, her growth as a Lit Christ executor, 
and her interactions with 10th Executioner Mika and the 4th Executioner Wagner. During her arcade story, she relentlessly in pursuit of justice and her determination to eradicate the voids and to stop the Hollow Knight while aiding Hyde as well. Her story leads her to Merkava, a void with human cognition, as she suspects Merkava of murdering her parents. Oria excels in quick, flute movements and combo attacks, making her a formidable opponent in close and mid-range combat. She is quite efficient in neutral, especially with her excess power Thanatos, that can push her opponents to corner or even juggle for extended combos. If you are new to the game, I would definitely advise you to give her a chance. Yuzuriha is born into a family that has safeguarded an ancient swordsmanship style for generations. And her family is actually the descendants of the reformists of the Night Blade. However, Yuzuriha is not just a guardian of her family's legacy, but also a vibrant character who brings a sense of lightheartedness to the game's often dark narrative. Her chronicle story explores her carefree attitudes and the weight of her inherited responsibilities, leading her to meeting with Ogre, the leader of an invert group Bankikai, that will later on fight against Hilda and her amnesia to be the strongest invert faction of the city. As the guardian of the sacred shrine, Yuzuriha tries to keep the peace during the Hollow Knight, belonging to none of these factions. As she is also the childhood friend of Hyde, the protagonist, she aids him on his quest, fighting voids and other inverts that become a threat. And although Yuzuriha is a carefree, cheerful character, she might be one of the hardest characters of the game. She demands mastery of range and timing, using Iaido techniques for zoning and her martial arts for neutral skip. She can control the pace of the fight, keeping opponents at a distance while striking with precision. She is also capable of launching rapid assaults, but a wrong move can lead to her defeat as well, so she is definitely one of the most difficult characters of Under Night in Bird. Our next up is Mika, the 10th executioner of Lit Christ, also one of the comic relief characters of Under Night in Bird. She is vibrant, energetic, and troublesome for Lit Christ. Unlike Oria's driven and focused demeanor, Mika presents a more light-hearted and straightforward perspective. Yet she shares the same dedication to the cause of Lit Christ. She escapes from Lit Christ headquarters to find Orie, gets on an airplane without authorization, finds herself on a stranded island, and then rescued to find herself in the middle of Hollow Knight. Mika is just an extraordinary character, you know. And during her arcade story, she tries her best to aid Orie to defeat other inverts and the voids with her gigantic glows. Her gameplay is quite dynamic, powerful and surprisingly versatile. She specializes in close range combat and her fighting style is aggressive and straightforward, much like her personality. If you are looking for a fast close range character with heavy hits and impactful combos, Mika might be your cup of tea. Although she has a neutral skip move, I believe she might have problems against characters that can control the neutral ground or with zoning abilities. Now let's talk about the brains of Amnesia, Chaos. His quiet and intellectual demeanor masks a sharp and strategic mind. And his chronicle story presents his quest to obtain the void he uses to fight, Aji Dahaka. He sneaks inside the Lichtkreis base during a battle between Amnesia and Lichtkreis there he meets Gordo the Reaper, the bodyguard of Hilda. As Gordo suspects Chaos's thirst for knowledge, he was sure that Chaos would join their ranks sooner or later. As Chaos obtains a tome from Lith Crisis base and later, confronted by Orie, he uses his access to summon this deadly void to be his servant and then joining the Amnesia. And as you can guess, Chaos is a puppeteer character, he is heavily relying on Aji Dahaka and sending him to battle, while he can pressure the opponent himself. It is important to think tactically using Aji Dahaka to set up attacks, control the space and disrupt the opponent's strategies. Players need to maintain a balance between using Chaos and his creature effectively, making his gameplay a challenging and also a rewarding experience for those 
who enjoy a more strategic approach to the fighting games. Carmine is driven by intense emotions and a raw, almost reckless approach to his newfound powers. Becoming an invert and obtaining the blood spike power, unlike other characters who find a sense of purpose or duty in their abilities, Carmine wrestles with the destructive nature of his powers and the isolation it brings. He belongs to no faction, helping no one, and often rejected Gordo's invite to amnesia. And Carmine's arcade storyline is an extension of his internal conflicts and his aggressive demeanor. He bears a deep-seated anger towards the voids and other inverts. In terms of gameplay, Carmine is characterized by his high-risk, high-reward style. His unique ability revolves around using his own blood to power his attacks, which means that many of his stronger moves come at the cost of his own health. His moves are visually striking, often involving blood-based projectiles and area-of-effect moves that can control large portion of the screen. Feels a bit like between beginner and intermediate difficulty with lots and lots of combo possibilities. Feels like a challenging character to master, but incredibly potent in the hands of a skilled player. Byakuya is a character who is really and really obsessed with his sister. The core of his story revolves around his bound with his sister, as Byakuya suddenly loses his beloved sister in a car accident and then found himself in depression. He turns into an invert while he tries to collect his thoughts and searches for his sister, denying his loss. His invert powers grant him the power of web-like trap attacks and spider-leg-like razor blades on his back. However, one day as he meets with a character that I will also speak later on in this video, who looks completely like Byakuya's dead sister, Sukuyomi. Byakuya orders this character to act like her own sister while doing whatever she wants for her goals. And her goal is to have her revenge from amnesia that destroyed Banki Kai faction. Byakuya's journey is driven by a desire to protect and cure Sukuyomi, and he is known for his ability to set up traps, control the battlefield with his web-based moves. These webs can restrict opponent's movements, create openings for combos, or just set up some defensive zones. Playing Byakuya effectively requires foresight and planning, as well as the ability to adapt to the flow of the battle. Let's continue with Lit Crisis Prodigy, Wagner. As a member of the prestigious Lit Crisis organization, Wagner takes her role as the protector against the chaos of the Hollow Knight very seriously. I mean, she is also the third executioner of the Order. She is sent by Elite Christ as an undercover agent so that she would investigate amnesia and other Hollow Knight activities and end them. We learn more about her background as a member of a distinguished family within the Elite Christ and her strong sense of responsibility to uphold her family's honor and the ideals of the Elite Christ. She is less forgiving and more serious than Orie, denies any kind of support and aiming to end Hilda and her plans to be a rebirth. And of course, anyone who gets in her way turns to ashes. Wagner's gameplay is a direct reflection of her character traits, just powerful, aggressive and relentless. She excels in close-range combat by using her fire-imbued sword and shield to do combos, her special moves are characterized by their high damage output and her ability to apply pressure on her opponents relentlessly. So if you are just looking for a character with offensive momentum that can break through defenses with powerful strikes and not giving the opponent a room to breathe, Wagner might be your character. Although I started my Undernight in Bird journey with Yuzuriha, Altnum and Orie, I think my favorite character became Gordo as soon as I finished his chronicle and arcade stories. Known as the Reaper among Inverts, Gordo is actually quite laid back yet burdened by a past that continues to influence his actions. We witness the battle between Amnesia and Banki Kai during his chronicle story, during the battle between Hilda and Ogre, a member of Amnesia, also Gordo's friend Roger, discovers a fragment of Abyss that turns him into a Void. As Gordo hesitates to end the life of his friend, sensing the change in excess, Wagner appears before Gordo, finishes Roger's Void form, killing him with a fiery strike. After these events, Gordo left Amnesia, 
although still caring for the well-being of his friend Hilda and Chaos, that leads him on a path to protect Hilda from turning into Void while trying to become a rebirth and to fight against Wagner. As for his gameplay, Gordo excels in mid and long range combat, allowing him to control a battlefield with sweeping attacks and also neutral skip to pressure his opponents into the corner. In addition to that, his unique ability, Grid Warpull, allows him to steal the opponent's grid and turn the tide of battle, as he can dictate the pace of the fight and punish his opponents for their mistakes. As another member of Amnesia, let's talk about Enkidu. He is driven by a strong personal code of honor and a deep-seated desire for true, unfettered combat. Unlike many other characters in the game, Enkidu's journey is less about the supernatural aspects of the Hollow Knight and more focused on his quest to find meaning through the battle and to test his martial prowess against worthy opponents. His main goal is to fight against Wallstein's might until only one of them survives. Although he's a member of Amnesia, he isn't dedicated like Chaos or Gordo. He only supports Hilda so that he can fight against strong opponents and his gameplay is therefore raw, straightforward and grounded. Similar to Mika, he also specializes in close range, hand to hand combat, relying on his physical prowess rather than flashy supernatural abilities. His fighting style is visceral and direct, emphasizing brutal strikes and grappling techniques. And one of Enkidu's unique gameplay aspects is his ability to break through enemy defenses with his powerful blows. A veteran of countless battles and once lead crisis hero, Wildstein is now the guardian of Lin, in a more beast-like form. Wildstein's journey is marked by his unwavering loyalty to Lin, defending her with his life. Their journey is to find the cause of the Hollow Knight and prepare for a confrontation against Amnesia. During his chronicle story, we see Lin getting captured by Hilda and questioned about her origins. And suddenly, we see Wildstein waltzing through the Amnesia headquarters to save her. As for his arcade story, his main goal is to protect the princess, defeat Hilda and then do the final battle against Enkidu. Wildstein's gameplay on the other hand is a direct reflection of his physical prowess and battle-hardened nature. He's a powerhouse character, a grappler with a charged move, delivering crashing blows as well as neutral skip special moves. Wildstein's gameplay requires players to capitalize on his strength and reach, using his powerful grabs and strikes to overpower his enemies. However, as you can guess, he lacks the agility that other characters have. Known for his agility and his secretive nature, Seth is a Nightblade assassin. We learn more about the origins of Nightblade and how Seth met with Lin's previous reincarnation when he was just a child. He promises Lin to save her from this endless cycle of reincarnation by breaking the curse. And his main goal is to fulfill his promise. For this, he even meets with Chaos of Amnesia at some point possibly planned by Lin's older brother Kuon and receives the Nightblade daggers. And for his arcade mode, his main goal is to capture Lin. Seth is a high mobility character, utilizing his quick movements and teleportation ability to outmaneuver opponents. His fighting style is based on hit and run tactics, making him quite difficult to predict and catch. His unique ability to set up projectiles known as orbs adds a strategic layer to his gameplay as these orbs can be used to catch his opponents off guard, allowing Seth to create traps and control the flow of the battle. Playing Seth effectively requires a good understanding of spacing and timing as well as the ability to read the opponent's movements and react quickly. Unfortunately, Tsukiyomi is not a playable character, but her story is deeply explained in her own Chronicle episode. Prior to her role as Byakuya's sister, Tsukiyomi was known as Strix, being one of the most trusted members of Banki Kai and Ogre. And although she's an invert, her ability was to grant someone power-ups and buffs, so basically she's not like other characters. After the battle between Hilda and Ogre, Strix is left alive by Hilda as a sign of pity, however Strix's excess vessel is then 
pierced by one of her closest friends, Zohar. Just like Gordo's friend Roger, Zohar also seemed to lose her sanity during that time, succumbing to her inner feelings of jealousy towards Strix. And with her vessel pierced, Strix wandered aimlessly during the Hollow Knight until she meets Byakuya. Their bounce becomes mutually beneficial, Strix becomes Kiyomi, fills the hole in Byakuya's heart and Byakuya fights for Strix's sake. Fonon's story starts with her sudden change in her life. As an ordinary student, she learns about the Hollow Knight and the voice through social media and willing to give it a try. The end? She gets bitten by a void and turns into an invert. However, she is not afraid at all. In fact, she is more like in her rebel era. Fonon meets with Surugi, a member of vigilante group called Axis Force Guardians and learns all about the inverts. There she receives the whip from Surugi, that will be her weapon through her serpent-like invert power. And sometime later, Fonon leaves EFG and wanders through the Hollow Knight alone to show her powers. While this school vigilante group, EFG is defeated by Amnesia. Fonon's gameplay relies on her whip, granting her a unique fighting style, combining long-range attacks with mid-range control. This allows Fonon to keep her opponents at bay while also giving her ability to lash out with powerful sweeping strikes. Her special moves often involve the use of her whip to control the space and manipulate her opponents, making her a threat at various ranges. Once a human, Merkava was transformed into a void, a fate most humans fear. However, unlike other voids, he retains his consciousness. As he hides from the society and lives upon a mountain, feasting on other voids and inverts. Meanwhile, the Ritter Shield, Lead Crisis sister organization, sends Londreka to investigate this matter. As Londreka encounters Merkava, both agrees not to fight but to understand each other's sight. Londreka learning about Merkava and Merkava learning about the approaching events. Both keep their promises, Londreka never reveals about Merkava's location nor its intention. However, what Londreka didn't know is that Merkava harbors an insatiable hunger for excess, targeting both voids and inverts to devour them after all. He is characterized by his long, flexible limbs and the ability to extend his body to attack from a distance. His fighting style is unpredictable and fluid, capable of swift, sweeping movements that can catch opponents off guard. His unique ability to fly briefly adds an additional layer to his gameplay, allowing him to approach from an unexpected angles and evade attacks. Playing Markov effectively requires a good understanding of spacing and the ability to adapt to rapidly changing combat situations, making him a challenging but rewarding character for players who mostly enjoy unorthodox fighting styles. Now let's talk about Watista, the autonomic nerve. Created by an unknown master, possibly by the Hollow God to maintain the balance during the Hollow Knights and to eradicate any voids, creating a threat. Batista's role in Chronicle is to explain the origin story of Under Night in Birth, and her arcade story is about her trying to stop Hilda's ascension to rebirth. Here she also meets Hyde and develops a kind of a friendship with him. As for her gameplay, Watista is a full charge character and known for her zoning capabilities, using her crystal-based attacks to control a battlefield from a distance. Her fighting style emphasizes strategic placement and timing as she can set up energy traps that detonate after a delay or upon command. And as for her spatial moves, Watista can unleash powerful beams of energy or just creating barriers making her a formidable opponent in both offense and defense. Playing Batista effectively requires a tactical approach, carefully managing her left and right up and down charged spatial moves while playing both aggressively and defensively. Now let's talk about Lin, the Princess of the Night Blade. Lin is actually an ancient being, having lived for centuries due to her reincarnation power or the curse. She traveled and lived with Waldstein until she meets Hyde. As Hyde carries the sword that Kuan used centuries ago to seal Waldstein's excess. 
As Hyde helps her to get away from a tough situation, Lin also saves Hyde from a group of voids, however, unable to prevent Hyde from becoming an inbirth. As Lin sees the sword that would destroy the curse of reincarnation, she decides to fight alongside with Hyde to prevent Hilda from becoming rebirth and to find her older brother, Kron the Eternal. Lin's gameplay reflects her agility and centuries of combat experience. She is fast and a nimble fighter, utilizing quick strikes and swift movements to outmaneuver her opponents. Her fighting style emphasizes speed and precision, allowing her to chain together rapid attacks and fluid combos. Her spatial moves showcase her mastery of the sword and her ability to harness her excess for enhanced mobility and powerful attacks. Playing Lin effectively requires a combination of quick reflexes and strategic thinking as her strength lies in her ability to quickly close distances, execute rapid strikes and evade enemy attacks. Nanase's narrative explores her transformation from an ordinary high school student to an inbirth wielding a wind-infused sword. This dramatic change in her life thrusts her into a complex world of voids, inbirths and the ongoing conflicts of the Hollow Knight, with a twist of misunderstanding between her and Hyde. Nanase blames Hyde for turning into an inbirth but conveys this situation in a really, really weird way making Lin and Orie thinking Hyde is just, you know, messing around with girls. Along with Mika, she's another comic relief character in the dark world of Undernight in Birth, but her gameplay mirrors her vibrant and energetic character. She is known for her mobility and her ability to harness wind for both offensive and defensive maneuvers, while her fighting style is dynamic, combining her swordsmanship with wind-based attacks that allow her to control space and keep her opponents at a distance. Her spatial moves often involve swift strikes enhanced by the wind, giving her the ability to launch surprise attacks and quickly move around the battlefield. Hyde is the protagonist of Under Night in Birth, a second-year student in the same high school as Orie, Seth, Carmine and Tsurugi, and he is also the childhood friend of Yuzuriha. He carries the sword insulator that Kron used centuries ago with the ability of closing the excess vessel of an inbirth. He has the power to stop Hilda and the curse of Lin and Kuon. Therefore, a big responsibility is upon Hyde's shoulders. And along with Lin and Wildstein, he plans to stop Amnesia and Hilda's plans to become a rebirth. During his chronicle, he is also confronted both by Kron the Eternal and Hilda the Paradox, both implying the power Hyde possess. Hyde is a well-rounded fighter with a versatile skill set, making him accessible to new players while still offering depth for more experienced players. His fighting style is a mix of swift sword play and ranged energy attacks, allowing him to adapt to different opponents and situations. Hyde's spatial moves showcase his ability to harness excess for powerful strikes and energy projectiles, and playing Hyde effectively involves a balance of offensive pressure and defensive tactics, making him a solid all-rounder in the game. Now let's talk about our antagonist, Hilda the Paradox. She's a character of grand ambitions to become one of the rebirths and then to defeat Leith Christ and Kron the Eternal to be the sole ruler of the Hollow Knight. As the leader of the organization known as Amnesia, she defeated Ban Ki Kai and their leader Ogre in an open war with Leith Christ and nearly aimed by each and every character of Under Knight in birth. And although her arcade story is not canon, she defeats all those who oppose her and then gathers the power of the Hollow Knight for herself. Hilda is a zoning character, specializing in long-range attacks that keep her opponents at bay. Her fighting style emphasizes her ability to control space with variety of projectiles and energy-based attacks, allowing her to pressure opponents from a distance and even with her teleport move. Her spatial moves cover a wide area and can be used to trap or limit her opponent's movements, 
and playing Hilda effectively requires a strategic approach, focusing on controlling the pace of the battle and keeping enemies at a distance where her long range attacks are most effective, making her one of the most difficult characters to play as. Unfortunately, Londraka has no Chronicle episode, so beside him meeting with Merkava, his arcade story is about Londraka Light trying to defeat the members of Lit Christ and ending the crisis that Hilda started. As a member of Rittershield, he aims to bring his organization to the same level as Lit Christ, especially by defeating Wagner and proving his strength. Londraka is known for his ice-based abilities, his fighting style is methodical, focusing on controlling the battlefield with his ice techniques to limit his opponent's movements and create openings for attacks. And his special moves involves the use of ice to either immobilize his opponents or enhance his own mobility, giving him a tactical advantage in combat. Playing Londraka effectively requires a good understanding of spacing and the ability to anticipate the opponent's moves as his strengths lie in his ability to control the pace of the fight and execute well-timed attacks. As for last, let's talk about the remaining two crossover characters, Altinum and Akatsuki. Altinum is from the Melty Blood series, another fighting game series developed by French Bread, and Altinum is all about sarcasm and bringing down the fourth wall during her arcade story. She has no connection to the Hollow Knight nor the Inverse whatsoever. As an outsider, she views the events of the Hollow Knight with a certain detachment but curiosity. Altinum wields a handgun and a whip, allowing her to fight effectively at both long and close range. Her fighting style combines precise shooting mechanics with fluid melee attacks, making her a well-rounded and dynamic fighter. Altinum can quickly switch from zoning to close combat and can easily mix her combos to skip neutral and to push her enemies to the corner, making her an effective character to play. And as for the last character, Akatsuki, another crossover character, is originally from Akatsuki Blitzkamp series. Akatsuki's story is that of a World War II era soldier who after being subjected to a cryogenic experiment finds himself in the modern world and, subsequently, in the midst of the Hollow Knight. Akatsuki is a close-range fighter, relying on his martial arts skills and lightning moves. His attacks are direct and impactful, with a focus on strong, singular strikes and combo potentials. His unique ability to generate electric energy, a result of the experiment he was subjected to, adds a dynamic element to his combat style. This energy can be infused into his strikes for added power or used to stun his opponents, creating openings for further attacks. Playing Akatsuki effectively involves mastering the timing of his powerful moves and using his electric energy at the correct time to control the flow of the battle. Before closing the video, I would also like to talk about Undernight in Bird 2 Sis Celes and what awaits us in the sequel. With Hilda the Paradox defeated and her ambitions shattered, the true threat appears. Kuon, the Eternal Rebirth. Kuon's intentions are dark and ominous, foretelling a catastrophic event he calls as the Immortalize. Mankind will be marked for ruin and the world will be engulfed in flames and chaos, leading to cosmic collapse and oblivion. His aim is to pierce the veil between realms that will lead to an infinite void. And once a hero of the Nightblade, now he aims to have his revenge for the curse he never deserved. And I believe that's it. That's all you need to know before playing on the Night in Bird 2 Cicelles. And if you are interested in the story and overall narrative, be sure to check out my Undernight 2 open beta video as well. That might give you some insight about the overall gameplay and how the fighting game mechanics actually work and look like. I am planning to make a comprehensive review of Cisteles, talking about the new mechanics, changes and the newcomer characters as well, but for the time being, I think that's all. As always, thank you for watching today's video. 
Any humble support through Patreon or YouTube join is really appreciated. More will soon to come. Stay tuned. Oh, 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 o